Michael. Start with Michael Lev. Hi there. Hey, Michael. Um, so you sought to improve the pitching staff, um, sort of a multi-year uh, project, you brought in Nate Yeski, uh, devoted more scholarships to it. What's your assessment of how the staff has done so far? I think it's been good in spots. I think uh, our starters uh, have a lot of wins under their belt. I think um, if you look at it, I think those guys combined are seven or eight and one in terms of, of that statistic. And that's really the one that matters to me. Uh, I think in spots, the bullpen has been really good, uh, you know, with Preston and, and Vince and, and Quinn and, and helped us win some important games that were close late that allowed our offense to separate. Uh, I think there's some things that we can do better. Uh, I think we can attack the strike zone a little bit better. I think we can finish hitters off uh, when we get to two strikes a little bit better. So those will be some points of emphasis moving forward. Sure. When you look at Garrett Irvin's performance so far, does it seem like he's gotten a little bit more comfortable each time that he's gone out there? Yeah, he's, he's a winner. I mean, I think if you looked around college baseball, uh, over a four-year period, and, and last year was unique because we didn't get to play the season, but I doubt there's um, many pitchers across the country with more successful experience, and what I mean by that is winning experience than Garrett. I mean, he's won everywhere he's been. Uh, we had a little bit of a hiccup with his arm, which has taken us some time to, you know, reboot him and get the pitch count up, which we feel good about where that's at right now, and uh, very excited. I thought he responded really well uh, to the adversity in the first inning, uh, the other night when he pitched. And I mean, he retired 16 out of 17 hitters at one point. And, um, I thought that's very on par for what, what he is and what he does and excited to see him continue to, to hit his stride as, as we're moving along here. Sure. One last one about pitching. Um, there are several guys on your roster and obviously the roster is bigger than it's been before, but who haven't pitched yet so far this season, do you expect any of those guys to be folded into the to the mix and or have you know prominent roles going forward i think there will be some guys that potentially get in the game that haven't gotten in the game yet due to various circumstances uh to say what role that that's kind of hard to say um i do like the pieces that are in place right now with the guys that uh we have been using if they pitch at their best i like them even more you know i mentioned the two two things that we want to itemize and need to get better at and I think if they do that, I like the core that we've kind of gone with. But I do think there's some guys that can help. And there's some guys that have been on the outskirts that will be good pitchers here in the future. Um, but we're, we're really focused on right now. And uh, I like the guys that we have and I have a lot of confidence in them. <clears throat> Next question, Ari Koslow. Uh, Coach, Brendan Bossier and Ryan Fulgate currently lead the conference in hits so far this season. What have you seen from them in terms of like confidence at the plate, as well as helping out others around them in the lineup? Yeah, I think they both have matured well. And I think, you know, when you mention offense right now, the thing that I'm most pleased with is the improvement of each individual player in our program. I think if you look at them to a man, every guy is better than they were a year ago, or maybe two years ago, or even three years ago, in some cases with some of the older players. And I think Ryan and Brandon really typify that. I think they've always had ability, um, you know, with with uh, bat speed, power, ability to drive the ball. And we saw that early on because um, they both got significant time as freshmen. Uh, both were off to outstanding starts last year. I just think they're playing with great control of themselves. And, and that's allowing them to see the baseball and control the strike zone and be incredibly productive as, as you itemized. And uh, I think they're developing it at a rate that, that I'm very pleased with. And, you know, they've been a big part of our success thus far. And I think they will be as we continue the season as well. And then Dante Williams had a big weekend with six hits in his first home run. How big of a, like a momentum swing do you think that was for him heading into conference play this week? I think Dante does a really good job of, of taking it at bat to at bat and pitch to pitch. And, and again, you know, I mentioned those, those previous two guys improving, he's really done a good job at that too. Every year he's been here, I feel like he's become a better player and always been a productive player, but I think he's, he's probably at the best spot he's been at in his career in terms of the at bats we want him to take and the impact that it has on our team. And I know um, one thing about Dante is, 
you know, when the lights are, are brightest, that's when he's at his best. And I think that's a unique quality. And so I only anticipate him to continue to, to take the at-bats that our offense needs, play the defense that our defense and pitching staff need and, and be, be awesome going forward here. Looking forward to seeing that. Next question, David Kelly. Hey, Jay, uh, Preston Price obviously has a, a high strikeout rate going right now. What, what has most impressed you about what he's been able to do so far this season? I think the situations that we've put him into have all been what I would call a tipping point in the game relative to winning or losing and just his consistency of coming through and executing pitches. I think that's the most impressive thing. His maturation here, uh, much like some of the guys that I just mentioned on the offensive side, has been really fun to watch. I mean, just a couple of years ago, we weren't ever talking about him as being a, an impact guy. And now he's the guy we want in the game in those situations. So he obviously has a great arsenal of pitches to get people out, but just his poise and ability to execute the pitch in key situations has really, really lifted our team. And, and I guess the other thing I noticed in, in the game on Sunday, he, you know, the strikeouts he got were immediate for the first five outs, I think were strikeouts. The last five outs were in play outs. Is there anything to that, that they're coming more on the front side there? No, I think, uh, the, I mean, the, the, the key of that game was the fifth inning. We were ahead five to four. They had two runners on base. And I felt like we were going to continue to score. We needed to keep the momentum in our dugout. And then he struck two hitters out on seven pitches. He threw a ball and then threw six consecutive strikes, which was outstanding. I think that was the, the most we had stretched him out in terms of, of innings. And we were able to do that because his pitch count was relatively low. He'd had two days off prior to, since the last time he pitched, which is more than he'd had uh, at any point this season. And then we also expanded the lead. And when, when you expand the lead, you can maybe be a little bit more aggressive with your pitch calling to try to force some early contact. And we wanted to see how many outs we could get out of him. And so that was, that was kind of, put together and he came in in a high leverage situation where we needed strikeouts or weak contact. And then the game kind of changed immediately when we went in in the bottom of the fifth inning and scored five. Next question, Brian Peterson. Coach, are you sticking with the same rotation in, in the same order uh, with your starters? We're going to talk about that. We'll probably announce that tomorrow. And, and the only reason what we're going to, do is I haven't had a chance to talk to the players individually yet. And, um, you know, so I want to make sure we're communicating first with the team and, and how we're lining everything up and yeah. then we'll get it out there. So it's just a timing issue. If we were having this meeting tomorrow, it wouldn't be an issue, but we took yesterday off, um, you know, with the exception of some guys that it was their bullpen day, uh, which they'll have a different day off. Um, so just that's out of respect to the players. I want to make sure that that's communicated to them first. Is it fair to assume that whoever ends up being the Monday guy is kind of falling into the uh, the Tuesday role for the future weeks? No, or, absolutely, no? absolutely not. Um, you know, we'll look at this weekend as a four game playoff with everybody on deck uh, from game one, and and so the pitchers that are on the the twenty seven man roster for this weekend are all available Friday, and they're all available Saturday, they're all available Sunday. Um, and then we'll probably bring a couple extra guys out um, to be able to pitch for Monday. Um, and then the guys that, uh, you know, maybe didn't pitch as much on the weekend will also factor into that game on Monday. Then we'll look at LMU and figure out the best way to, to set it up. They're a very good team as well. I think they have seven wins against Pac-12 teams at this point in time and has a chance to be a good road game for us. So this will be the, sh the fewest number of players you'll have available for a game because you took more to Frisco than 27, correct? Yeah, the Pac-12, Just you're, you're allowed 27 in Pac-12 games. Okay. Next question back to Michael Lev. How many of those 27 do you expect to be pitchers? You know, we are still working through that. We have a, a scrimmage today where we want to see some things. Um, you know, I'd say probably 24 or 25 are, are pretty well decided. Um, and there's 11 pitchers in that grouping, but we're going to make, we're going to make some more decisions uh, in the next couple of days with the, the travel squad. 
Sure. Um, Dante Smith, oh, Dante Smith, Dante Williams has had a couple of near misses on diving uh, plays so far this season. Are you almost surprised at this point when he doesn't make those catches? Well, he's a great center fielder and has really good instincts. And, uh, you know, a lot goes into that. You know, did we execute the pitch where it was meant to be, you know, hit? Or are, are they throwing the ball where we're playing? A lot of those kinds of things. I think it's different playing in our park versus other parks because there's so much uh, ground to cover out here. And that almost makes it even more unique and, and special how he usually plays defense because of, of the park that we play in. So uh, great center fielder. And, um, you know, so yeah, maybe a little bit. Sure. Um, UCLA has been one of the most consistent winning teams in the conference for a long time. Is there something in particular that John Savage's teams do well that has led to that sustained success? Yeah, I think they, they pitch extremely well, you know, and this year's no different, you know, three good, good starters, uh, really good bullpen, um, you know, that they typically itemize roles and, and have the, the talent and personnel to do that. So um, I think that's probably at, at the heart of it. Uh, they recruit really well um, in, in Southern California, and, and this team is is no different. And I know I'm ex extremely excited about this weekend, and I, I'm sure our players are as well. This will be a great, great weekend. You know, we love playing out there and, um, you know, really looking forward to it. What, what or who stands out the most about this particular UCLA team? You know, I think if, if you look at it, I think their, their starting pitchers all have good arms. We'll certainly be professional pitchers, um, you know, much like our guys. I mean, you know, we have a very, very talented rotation as well. I mean, I think you're going to see uh, the majority of the pitchers for both teams that, that step on the mound will be professional pitchers. So it's about executing pitches. And then it's about supporting um, that pitching staff with, with quality defensive play. And, and offensively, we'll put together a good plan of, of attack that, uh, you know, puts us in position to take the types of at-bats that we want uh, relative to their personnel, um, starting pitching, good bullpen, um, you know, athletic at the top of the order. Uh, their leadoff hitter, center fielder, Kevin Kendall, I think is a, a great player. Um, he is, is one of the most underrated players in, in the Pac-12, in my opinion. Uh, doesn't get talked about a whole lot. Um, you know, Matt McLean was, was a first-round pick out of high school. Um, you know, we didn't see these guys last year, though, so it's, it's a little bit harder to comment on anybody in the conference because of that. Um, you know, Mike, Michael Curiel is a good player, um, you know, just solid team, you know, and, and, and I think it's, it's one where, um, like I said, I think we're really excited to, to get out there and, and to compete and, and go for it because yeah, I, I like where our team's at right now, and I think this is a great time for us to match up. Next question back to David Kelly. Hey, Jay, just to kind of play off what Michael asked about Dante and, and diving, do you guys teach that element of the game, when to dive, when not to dive? I mean, we've seen so many people in this game lose their careers, and, you know, throwing themselves on the ground to try to catch balls. How much do you instruct that at this level, if at all? You know, the, the instruction part of that, David, it's a good question, is, is more around the strategy and the situation of the game. Like sometimes you need to make the catch to make the out, let's say, you know, it's second and third, two outs in the ninth inning and you're, you're up one where if it falls, you're now down one, but if you dive and catch it, you're up one and you win the game. Other times you might have a big lead. You know, the, the runners that are on base aren't as important as maybe the hitter. Maybe you want to keep him off second base. So we want to keep the ball in front of us at that point. So there's a lot of dive, no sign, no dive signs that go out there. It's kind of the same concepts of, when you want to play your, your defense and, and no doubles, um, you know, but uh, Dante in particular is a really aggressive outfielder and, and really contributes. And if you think about some of the plays he's made, like let's say there's two runners on and he, somebody smokes one in the left center and he dives and catches that, that's almost the same value as hitting a three run home run in, in terms of runs saved. And so he has great instincts and, and a great ability to know those situations, very intelligent, good leader of the defense out there. And um, yeah, if he wants to keep uh, spreading out and, and making some plays, I'm all for it. Next question, Matt Moreno. Just overall through 16 games, how close are you to where you hoped you would be entering Pac-12 play? You know, it, it's so, I know it's so boring and I, and I hate talking this way, but it's just, I'm only really focused on what's next. I mean, 
Sunday's game, there was no thought of, you know, Pac-12 play starting or what was behind us. Um, you know, I, I think we've done some really good things. I think, you know, I mentioned some of the relief pitchers in, in key spots have really come through for us. I think at times we've played really good defense. We had a really tough defensive game the other night against Wichita. But if you go back eight games, we've been very sound defensively and fundamentally. And I think that's led to our success. I think we've only had two to three games where offensively it's even been hard at all. You know what I mean? And, and playing a quality schedule, you know, a top 25 schedule at this point in time, um, you know, that that's something that, that shouldn't be, uh, you know, taken for granted, you know, because it, that's not the case if you look around statistics around the country. And so I think the consistency in the approach is what I'm really interested in going forward. But I think our players have demonstrated uh, that they're ready to play consistently and that we're always in the game. Like we're going to continue to compete and fight, whether we're ahead, we're tied or behind. So that's something that I'm really pleased. And I think that's something that we can draw on going forward as, as we go into conference and, and go into some, some uh, competitive games, which are going to be very fun to play. In. We talk about it with other sports and players that come from Southern California when they make this trip. Do you ever have concerns about your players maybe going out of their approach, trying to do too much just because they're going back home or playing against guys maybe they're more familiar with? <laughs> well, in terms of uh, being in Southern California, I don't, I don't think any fans are going to be at these games. So I think it's going to be us, UCLA, and uh, stadium personnel and pro scouts. So I'm not, not too concerned about that on this trip. I think it's, it's awesome. I mean, you know, if, if you look at Arizona baseball historically, the best teams of when they've had, you know, really good players from Southern California, like we do right now. And, and that was, that's is, and will always be really important to me uh, as the coach here that we recruit well there. And, um, you know, I think it's more of an exciting opportunity for the players. And I think on this year's team in particular, we have some uh, older players that have been successful that have, have had some adversity that they've overcome and there's a maturity that goes along when you've experienced both of those things. Like for most of them, I don't even know if it's anything we'll even think about. I, I think we've talked a lot about keeping our head down um, in terms of, of focus this week. And that'll be kind of the, the point of emphasis, you know, this week and, and going forward, because there's a lot of value in just being focused on what's directly in front of you and, and what it's going to take to be successful. So um, sure, natural emotion, but we'll try to counteract that with the, the right approach to things. Final question for coach. We'll go back to Michael Lev. UCLA has a good record. They're ranked and not ranked as high as they were at the start of the season, but they have lost a couple series to you know, San Francisco and Cal Poly. Like all due respect to those teams, I'm sure they're, they're good, but those are unexpected results. And there's been a lot of that in college baseball so far this season. Do you think there's any particular reason that we've seen more unpredictability across the sport or maybe many reasons? Well, I think the nature of baseball in itself is just different than basketball and football. And those are the, the two sports that probably get more attention than college baseball. But I think talent in those two sports is really going to usually be the separator in terms of who's going to win and who's going to lose. Baseball, you have one player, the pitcher, that has so much control over the game that the rest of your team can play an outstanding game. But if that one guy does not, then you're already at a competitive disadvantage. Uh, the game of baseball in itself is designed around the pitcher to be successful. I mean, it's a 17 inch plate. Think about if it was only like a, a 10 or an eight inch plate, the game would change. They'd be longer and it would probably flip towards the offense. So I just think the nature of baseball is different. And I think that's hard for a lot of people to get their head around. Like that you're going to see, you know, games that maybe the team with that's not quite as talented will win if that one pitcher really stands out or if the other team just plays better. So, you know, we really just try to focus on the play again, very boring answer. But over time, I think that will lend us to be successful, continue to be competitive, continue to be fundamental and be very consistent in how we roll those things out. So you know, with our talent, we end up on the, the right side of things more often than not. Great. Thank you, coach. All right, guys. All right. Questions for Garrett Irvin, please raise your hand.
We'll start with Michael Love. Gary, you obviously had sort of a, you had to reboot. That was the term that, that Jay used because of, of an arm issue. How would you assess your comfort level um, as, as each uh, step, uh, each step along the way here? Um, yeah, I would say it, uh, it's improved with each game. I think they kind of had me on a unique schedule where I was, I started at 20 pitches and then I, it progressed, um, 15, um, each week. So I think with each week and just being able to go out there, you know, an inning or maybe two more than the previous week, I think that helped, um, yeah, kind of get comfortable and, and find what worked for me again. Um, just because, you know, I, I did have to take, you know, a couple of weeks off just um, for discomfort in my arm. But other than that, um, I'm starting to feel really good and, and comfortable again. And yeah, I'm pretty excited. What, when did the issue crop up? Um, right after our dis or Thanksgiving break. So yeah, when we went home, um, it was just discomfort and, and the coaches um, kind of elaborated and said that uh, they would rather just be precautious. So sure. And how long were you shut down? Um, I was shut down for about, I'd say about three weeks. But um, yeah, we right when season started, my arm started, you know, feeling better. And, and now I have a lot of confidence with my arm health and with where I'm at in terms of um, stamina and everything else. So sure. Would you say you're 100 percent at this point? Um, yeah, I would say pr I'm pretty much at 100 percent. I'm ready to go. Just looking at your numbers a little bit, um, you had four walks, I think, in your all four appearances last year, and yeah. you had that many in one game this year. Is that sort of reflective of just not getting as many reps leading into the season? Um, I would just say, I mean, I don't think I would use that as an excuse. I think um, just this year, um, I think it's just my mental headspace. I think it was just getting comfortable back on the mound. And early on, I think, yeah, as my pitch count and my, you know, how comfortable I am on the mound has progressed. Um, so have, I think my walks have gone down a little bit um, each game. So I try not to focus on it too much, but I have noticed that, yeah, I'm walking, you know, a lot more guys than I'm used to. So I think as I get more comfortable and as I, you know, get more pitches under my belt each game, I think those will go down. So sure. Sure. And one more thing I wanted to ask you about um, is we noticed that you kind of do a little move when you're in the stretch, like kind of a, a dip type yeah. of move. Is that something new? That is new. Um, me and Yeski, we were, um, yeah, about a week or two ago, we just, we talked about how I don't get into my legs enough. And I think um, guys like um, Dan, uh, <laughs> Daniel Susak and Kaisen Donahue, they do it um, when they're hitting. So they kind of kind of helps them, you know, let, let them know to engage there and activate their legs. So I, I decided to adapt it into my stretch just because um, as the game progresses, I kind of go into just using all, my, all of my shoulder and all of my arm. And so it helps with, you know, not only protecting my shoulder, but just getting and staying more powerful in my legs. So um, yeah, that was something that Yeski um, helped me with and brought up and it's, it's helped a lot, I think. So. Next question, David Kelly. Hey Garrett, are you still under a pitch count at this point? Um, yes, I think, I think I'm pretty much even with all the, the other starters right now. Um, I think I I'm about, yeah, I'd say I'm about, about 110 pitches now. So each week, I think I was at 90 this last weekend. So I should be at about 100 or maybe a little bit more, but yeah, so I'll be, I'll be enough to go, you know, hopefully six, seven or eight um, this next week. And just how did you assess kind of this last outing and how you felt out there, you know, going, you know, into the sixth for the first time? Yeah. Um, as the game went on, I definitely got more comfortable, but I think I just need to, you know, me and me and coach Johnson talked about it and I need to, be ready right out of the gate. Um, I think me and a couple other of our pitchers, it's we struggle kind of with the first inning and just being sharp right out of the gate. So it's something that I need to work on because um, as, as you can see in the results, the first inning I, I did struggle and that's where all my walks were. So I need to 
um, work on, yeah, being sharp coming out of the gate and being ready to go. But I did feel good in the six and later and my arm, my arm felt great. So, so I'm excited to, you know, keep improving and improving my pitch count as well. And when you see what Preston Price is doing right now, what impresses you about, about what he's doing out there? I would just say, I would say it's just worth work ethic in general. Um, he, uh, he kind of came in this year and he was like a brand new dude and it, it really shows, it shows um, out there because we, you like how, how coach Johnson said, we put him in very high stress situations where um, we, we kind of put him in these positions to limit the damage and, you know, hopefully we can limit to one or two runs with bases loaded and he'll come out with, you know, no hits and three strikeouts. So he's, he's, yeah, each week he just keeps improving and, and yeah, it's very, it's very exciting to see. Next question back to Michael Lev. Garrett, what's your assessment of the pitching staff's performance overall so far? Um, I think we're improving each week. Um, I think there's in times um, like myself, we, we tend to give up more runs as, as our hitters um, keep adding runs to the board. So when we, when it's 10 zero, we, we feel comfortable in giving up, you know, five or six, we don't think it's a big deal. And, um, or I guess not that we don't think it's a big deal, but um, just that we can. So I think we need to uh, limit the walks with, you know, with, yeah, myself included, I need to limit the walks, but I think we, uh, yeah, we're improving each week and, and yeah, we'll be able to limit the runs and hopefully stay in those close games. So you're, so you're saying that you need to pitch kind of the same, whether it's zero, zero or 10, zero. Yes, I think that will help. And then um, in close games, we'll have all the confidence in our pitcher, no matter who's, who's out there to get the job done, because, you know, we've seen him do it multiple times. So. Sure. This is your first time uh, playing a Pac-12 series. Is this kind of something that you were looking forward to? Yeah, obviously you didn't get to do it last year. Yes, 100%. Um, obviously last year, uh, this time last year was when our season got canceled and that was right before Oregon State. So we were all very excited, especially myself and the other transfers and freshmen that, you know, we're getting ready to play Pac-12 baseball. So um, this week's, yeah, very important to us. And, and it's more of, it puts it in, into perspective um, because, yeah, we can't take anything for granted. So um, we're very excited to just play any Pac-12 team at this point, but especially um, UCLA, so. Did you, did you have any Division I offers or opportunities coming out of high school? Um, I did, I, I had um, UC Riverside, it was, but other than that, it was pretty much between um, UC Riverside and, and Point Loma, and I just, I felt that Point Loma was a better fit for me, so. Sure, did you have like a dream school when you were in high school that you were aspiring to get to? Um, yeah, some, some could say that it could be, you know, a school, I, I guess, no, not really. I don't think, I think just any high caliber baseball, I, I was excited to get out of, um, California because obviously, you know, everyone loves there and everyone wants to live there, but I kind of wanted to experience something else. So, um, but yeah, I don't think any school in particular, I think, you know, I, I was my dream school, but, um, I could say that. Yeah, Arizona, I, I remember coming to um, Tucson a few times and yeah, just the, the whole atmosphere here. So I, you could say Arizona in there. <laughs> sure. I, I, was, I saw an old bio of yours from Point Loma and you, you listed the Angels as your favorite baseball team and yeah. Darren Erstad as your favorite player. Is that accurate? That, yeah, that's accurate. Okay. Um, I love so, Okay. But Darren Erstad, when he was in his prime, you were like one or two years old. So can you yep. explain how Darren Erstad is your favorite player? Well, that's, well, I'm an Angels fan. So with, you know, the 2002 World Series being the only World Series they're a part of, I remember my dad bought me a DVD of um, the whole year of 2002. It was all the highlights. And I used to just watch it over and over um, in the car whenever we were on long drives or anything like that. So I'd watch all of his highlights and I just thought, um, 
yeah, that, you know, obviously that's, that's one of their only highlights was the 2002 <laughs> World Series. So um, I just kept rewatching that. And then that's when I decided that he was, he was my favorite player. Did you get a chance to meet him when you guys played Nebraska last year? Um, no, not personally, but I remember, yeah, it was very exciting just to be on the same field as him um, with seeing him. And then I think my dad at, at one point ended up playing golf with him, but um, yeah, other than that, I, no, I haven't been able to personally meet him. Are there any more questions for Garrett Irvin? All right. Thank you, Garrett. Thank you. All right. First question for Dante Williams. We're going to Ari Kopp. Uh, Dante, you had a pretty big performance this past weekend with six hits in your first home run. How big of a momentum booster would you say that was for you? And where would you say your confidence level is at heading into conference play? Um, it's always good to, you know, perform well and stuff like that. But um, I'm just excited to go on the road and, you know, start conference play with the, the team and stuff like that. And um, getting a win like that Sunday was huge for us. Um, I feel like um, rather, rather than talking about my confidence, it's all of ours on the pitching staff. Um, offensively and everything like that. So I feel like everybody going into UCLA where energy's high, you know, confidence is at a high level, so we're ready to go. Next question, David Kelly. Hey, Dante, I want to go through your, your, your pre-at-bat routine kind of step-by-step. Step. I've noticed all the different things that you do and, and you can kind of tell me what means what and, and all the meanings in that. So we'll start with it. You walk up to the dirt, and you draw what looks like a T tapping the bat three times. What's that mean? Um, I go up to the plate, drawing across every every at bat. Um, I'm very religious. My mom's a pastor, actually. So um, we, me and my siblings grew up, um, you know, always, you know, blessed by the best. So, um, you know, I wouldn't be in this situation. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the man above. Uh, so uh, I draw across and tap it three times. I just do everything in threes kind of uh that's just something that you know I've, I've i've done and i just stuck with uh from there now is there a reason you draw it with the knob and not the barrel uh no reason just okay. just kinda, with the knob is easier it's a little bit smaller so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so now yeah. after that after you're writing and you know doing your cross there's a little hip twist before uh -huh. you walk into the batter's box yeah, uh, just kind of like uh, I think Gary mentioned, just kind of, you know, engaging your legs and your hips and stuff like that. So just kind of a little friendly reminder, um, you know, when I get in the box, use my lower half and, um, you know, just swing on my legs. Then you dig your plant spot at the back of the batter's box, skip to the front with the kick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> you, you guys recognize this. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's just something that, you know, that's my pre pre at bat routine and something that just gets me locked in and, you know, get, gets my breathing going in the right spot in my head space, um, ready to go before, you know, I get in there and compete. And then lastly, the deep look at the bat, tap four times with your left hand. Yep, yep. Um, just kind of, again, just a, you know, a, a breathing exercise and uh, resetting my breath and getting my getting my head focused on you know, whether it's a bad pitch before, just kind of resetting myself um, every time. When, when did all that start and how long have you been doing that? Uh, I would probably say since I've been here. I mean, we, we preach, um, you know, just being in a good headspace and being able to, you know, throw away previous at-bats or things that don't go right, just uh, staying in the moment, being able to breathe. So um, I've, I've taken that and made that a part of my game. and. Um, I think I've been doing a good job um, on, you know, keeping the game slow and focusing on, you know, my breath and stuff. It's a it's a hard game. So uh, being able to stay mentally locked in and uh, tough like that, you can can set you over the bar a little bit. And lastly, on this topic, did did you do all of them together at once? Did you kind of add pieces and do you anticipate maybe there would be anything else you would add? to it in the future um no i think it's just kind of slowly start adding stuff on <laughs> here and there but uh you know just whatever feels good whatever i feel like you know uh feels good and you know 
I mean, I just I just roll with it. Uh, I don't know. That's it. <laughs> That's all I can say. Next question, Michael Lev. Dante, you've had some near misses with diving catches so far this season. Would you say that you expect to make those most of the time? Yes, 100%. I expect to make every play in the outfield. Uh, that's just my competitive nature. Um, I feel like I let my, my team down, my pitcher down when I don't, you know, make plays like that. Um, so, you know, I always beat myself up about the plays I, I, I haven't made and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I do. I do expect to make every play out there in outfield. The two that I can recall, I think the first one might have been like the first game of the season or the first series, it was kind of to your, I guess that would be to your um, left. And then the one the other day was you're coming forward. Is there any difference technique wise between those two or? Um, no, I mean, I mean, going dive in different ways. You feel like time and everything is still the same, just closing out on the ball. But um, no, I, I feel like, I mean, if it, if it touches your glove, you should catch it. So I, that's it. That's all I could. There's no excuse to why I dropped it or anything like that. I just feel like I should have caught both of those balls. Sure. Were, were those both cases where the, the you had it in your glove and then it was the impact of hitting the ground is what caused it to pop out? Uh, Probably so. I honestly, in, in the moment, I can't really, you know, if I watch a video, it probably looked like that. But in the moment, I that's the last thing on my on my mind when I uh, when when that happens. Sure. And Jay said there's such a thing as a dive or no dive sign that you'll get from the dugout. Yeah, you sure. get the no dive sign. Are you like bummed out about it? Um, it's it's just all about knowing the situation. Uh, sometimes and and how the the ball comes off the bat. I mean, if it's a high fly ball and we're in the no dives and it it's kind of like the ball that's not going to get past you. It's just going to bounce and just stay there. I mean, there is an instant where we might dive on that just because we know it's not going to get past us. So it's just just all about the you know the situation and stuff and. Yeah, we, we're we're gonna listen to our coaches with the with the no dive and dive signs. So we just gotta be cautious about that. Next question back to David Kelly. It just kind of uh, follow on that the diving, Dante. Do you ever have any apprehension? I mean, obviously that's that's a dangerous thing to do. I mean, I've seen a lot of guys go to the disabled list, you know, diving for baseball. So so what apprehension do you have in your mind when you're in that situation about whether or not you should dive for a ball? None at all. I, I just like when, when I'm out there on the field, I just give it my all. I just try to make every every play. So um, when I'm when I see a dive situation, I don't think about if I should dive, if I don't dive or if I'm going to hurt myself or not. I'm just kind of, you know, laying it on all on the line. And I, I could tell you that's what every player in the outfield, every player in the infield, they, they give you whatever they have. So um, that's the, the last thing on my mind when I'm trying to make a play for our team. Have you ever had any instruction along the way from any of your coaches on how to technically dive to protect yourself? I mean, is, is that um, anything that youth league instructors are doing now to kind of teach kids? Um, honestly, I don't know. I, I, I couldn't tell you, <laughs> I couldn't answer that question because <laughs> I've never, I don't think growing up, I've never been really taught how to dive. I, th I feel like you either know how to dive or you don't. It's really hard to like teach somebody how to dive. So I feel, yeah, I feel like you either have it or you don't. Next question back to Michael Lev. I know that Jay always preaches that every game is the same. Every game is the Super Bowl. But is there something different about Pac-12 play that gets your juices flowing maybe a little bit more? Um, I would just say, I mean, I'd have to agree with everything he's saying. Um, I don't think there's anything that changes when it comes to Pac-12. Um, every game is treated as the same. Um, each loss, each win can count as, you know, something great. So uh, when it comes to Pac-12 play and stuff like that, yeah, it's, you know, we're, we're shooting for winning a, a, a conference title and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's one game at a time and it's being able to stay in the moment and, you know, do whatever we have to do to perform that given pitch. So, um, yeah, it's exciting to play UCLA and stuff like that, but this Air Force and UCLA, there's nothing different. Mm -hmm. sure. the, the last time you played UCLA was two years ago. 
last time you played any conference games was basically two years ago. Does it seem like two years? Does it seem like it's been longer than that? How did, how does it feel? It's, it feels like it's been so long. I mean, it's playing baseball. It feels like ever since opening day, it's felt like I haven't played baseball in like five years. So <laughs> even though I played in the summer and stuff like that, but it, it just, I mean, it's just good to, to, to play again, just be able to interact and, you know, get on the field with your guys and stuff like that and compete and go, you know, go to work with them and, um, you know, seeing the competitive spirits and bloods that, you know, come out on the field and, you know, it's just a different, different kind of feel um, when, we're, when we're playing. Next question, Ari Kozlo. Dante, Brandon Bossier and Ryan Holgate currently lead the conference in hits. What have you seen from them this year in terms of confidence at the play as well as helping out the others in the lineup around them? Yeah, um, they're, they're both obviously great players. Uh, it's hard to argue that, but um, I think, you know, their, their headspace and, you know, where they're going to and how they're improving our team is, um, it doesn't get shown enough. Um, you know, these guys, Boss and Holgate, they, on a daily basis, just kind of, we, we talk in the dugout in between at bats, failures and stuff like that, just kind of keep your head up, your dog and stuff like, um, you know, we're, we're just nasty. So go out there and be relaxed and be you. Don't worry about anything else. Don't worry about, you know, the external things and um, this and that, but it's just focus on the task at hand and, you know, get what you have to get done. We got your back and stuff like that. So, um, you know, the, those are some characteristics that you can't really teach in leaders. So um, shout outs to them. Are there any more questions for Dante? All right, thank you, everybody. That's all we have for this afternoon.